Welcome back to the channel. This is JGN TV, and I'm exposing Augusta University. Ah, uh, see, I'm kidding. This was a highly requested video for, once again, anybody that is considering actually attending, was accepted, was accepted but doesn't know if they want to come, interested, mother wants them to go, a little bit of interested in Augusta University. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing the things that you need to know before you attend Augusta University. And this is not just apply to freshmen, this applies to anyone that is attending, whether you're coming in from um, your freshman year all the way up into your grad year. I'm not getting into grad stuff because I'm barely a junior. So you gonna have to lay that on your own, bro. Like, go ahead and subscribe because we have a whole lot more stuff coming this summer alone. And once we head back to school, there'll be a lot more in-person things that you guys should be very, very excited for that I know I'm already excited for. So go ahead and do that for me real quick. And if you haven't, most importantly, go ahead and smash that like button. <laughs> Please. The short, sweet, and to the point. And to give a little spin on the video, I'm actually going to try to do this video in under 10 minutes. The video may be over 10 minutes because I have an intro and other parts. We will try to get these tips done in under 10 minutes. So let's go. Uh, the first thing is campus location. And what I mean by that is if you're not already, and I don't feel like they do too good of a job um, as far as explaining what that looks like but if you were to go on a website or anything like that you would look up and see that it says that we have the Somerville campus the health and science campus the Forest Hills campus the downtown campus we have an unnecessary amount of campuses but the main campus is Somerville and that's where um, you I mean if you go on my channel you'll see on my videos over there that's the main campus that most of your classes will be especially if you're an underclassman it does not get confusing even though it sounds a little confusing and of course you have the bus routes that take you to every single part of the school so you shouldn't get too lost are the campuses far away from each other no they are not are they close no they are not i think seven minutes is probably the best number i can give as far as the distance between health and science and some of it which are honestly probably the main two campuses so you shouldn't have to worry about that because like i said there's a bus take it but uh, number two, the foods are high. I'm not. I, it's it's okay. It's not crazy. It's not it's not gourmet. It's not UCLA. It's high. Like it's not. There's a lot of stuff that could be there. They are expanding and getting like a pizza hut. I know they just did an Einstein bagel. They're they're improving, but it's still high. It's not nothing crazy. Uh, number three, you can have fun outside of campus. And what I mean by that is there are things for you to do that doesn't involve the school necessarily or that even involves you being on campus. I'm gonna try to go in my head and see what I know off memory. AMC and Regal, the Regal is gone. So we have an AMC, there is a Dave and Buster's, bowling alley, skating ring, mall, wing places everywhere, a trampoline, amusement park, open parks, And then of course downtown and a lot more where you can always look it up doing your research is the best thing you could ever do number four it is not a party school it is not a party school people will have them you will see the flyers out for the one or two every month but compared to the big school in georgia which i'm not naming names the big school in georgia that is known for having parties it is nothing and that's not a problem though there's, there's nothing wrong with that but if you are expecting that just know that's not um a bigger thing here. Uh, number five, in my personal opinion, having a car is a bonus because you do have a bus and if you have someone in your friend group that has a car, you really should be fine. I don't think it's too much of a necessity. And then when you throw in parking, I know that turns off a lot of people having to pay for a parking on campus. It's only $50. That's something that definitely turns off a lot of people, but it's there. But if you do have your car, go ahead and bring it because why not? Um, it'll definitely help you out in the long run and especially when Fridays come and you need to go somewhere for the weekend or if you just want to go home or whatever the case may be you got that for you so moral of the story is if you can find a cheaper version of anything even if that isn't books you know if it could be a lab coat or, or whatever the case may be definitely take that don't try to spend your money it's not necessary because if you're going down that route 
And if you're one of those people that wants to pay for the book every time, by the end of college, you will have spent $1,000 on just books alone. Do you want to spend $1,000 on books alone? Nah, I didn't think so. You're welcome. Uh, number six, maximize your opportunities. When you're on campus, you will have a lot of opportunities to attend a lot of events, whether that's um, free t-shirts, free food, giveaways, especially with COVID, a lot of the events were online last year, prizes or even like money that you can use on like your JAG account to buy maybe, uh, no, see, you thought I was gonna say book, but not buying books. God, if you're on campus and you see that, go ahead and maximize your opportunity to go to that event, go get the free food, enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. And I 100% mean this when I say this, one of the biggest regrets you could ever have in life is living the life that someone else wants you to live. If that is not what you want to do, do not spend four years, do not spend 48 wow, months exactly. plus doing something that someone else wants you to do and it's not what you want to do. Also, if you wanted to try out for the soccer club and you never made the high school team, you might as well start a club. Do it, branch out. Do what you always wanted to do. All right, so I was changing the lights because I thought it was cool, but it's starting to bother me. So if it's bothering you, just let me, I'll just, I'll leave it at this. So I'm sorry. Uh, financial aid. Me and financial aid have beef. One department of the school that is the worst communicators, and sadly it's the most important, but the worst communicators that there is, it is financial aid. Oh my God. You could turn something in on Friday, March 1st, and you're not getting it until Halloween. You could turn something in. Um, matter of fact, you could call today and they won't answer until next Friday. So with that being said, if you can, go ahead and just go in person. Don't try to do it, and this is for every aspect. If you can, turn in a scholarship award that you got in high school in person, don't do it online. If you can focus on yourself, go in person, because it's not worth it. Wow. It's really not. Yeah, also shout out to the um, class of 2024 freshmen that are coming in. Seem very excited. Number eight is to never, ever, ever take no for an answer. There has been so many times where I have asked for, it, it doesn't even matter what the situation is, bro. Like it could be perfect example. If you have a trash roommate and you want to move out of this room with this roommate and you go to, let's say your RA and you ask if you can move out. If your RA tells you, no, I know this sounds crazy, but don't take that for an answer. Go to the housing directors, go to the ROCs, the residents, go to those people that are the head of the RAs, the RAs boss, and you go have a one-on-one -on -one conversation so they can see how important it is. If it's that important to you, always wow. 10 out of 10, go and find the source and do not take no for an answer until you get what you want. Now, I don't mean that in every situation. I'm not giving out bad advice. If you want to be a part of a club and someone tells you no, keep going. Um, Honorable mention, parking. Parking is not bad depending on where you are. If you are living in UV, it's free. You should not have to pay. If someone tries to make you pay for parking at UV, you are getting scammed. You should only have to pay for parking if you A, live on the health and science campus in Elman Oak. I'm not gonna lie. I think they have to pay. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it like $300? But it's only $50 if you're going to class on Somerville, which is something you kind of have to pay if you have a card. Like you will get tickets. I'm not going to lie. They are pretty quick to ticket people. And the crazy thing is, I don't even think the parking lot ever fills up. Maybe not this past year of COVID. And I don't know if I can go back to 2019 and remember. I'm almost certain every spot would not get taken up. It might somehow get to like the last 15 on a, on a good Tuesday at like, you know, 10 o'clock or something. But uh, moving out of housing is not that bad. And don't critique me because I'm somebody who has yet to do it, but a lot of my friends have actually already moved out of housing and are in apartments now. So if that's something you're looking for, there's an unnecessary amount of apartments in the area. So you should not have any worry about finding an apartment and they do have close apartments too. So that's um, always on the good side that are close to school. And by definition of close, I mean within 10 minutes, which is not bad at all. Last but not least, the best thing you could probably do is to treat your college years like a college student. One of the biggest things that I'm kind of looking forward to with this school year coming, um, especially without COVID being a factor, or at least as much of a factor, um, for vaccinated people that is, being able to do things and like it felt like a college year. I think that's like the biggest thing that everybody kind of hated from this past year was that we were able to go on campus and you know, I, I could, 
somewhat had my classes in person but it was like so restricted and like I would have a class of six people and we would be spread out ac across the classroom and it just wasn't it wasn't really the vibe you know what I mean I just didn't really feel like I was in college I felt like I was there but not in college and that's kind of the worst thing that you could do when you don't have anything stopping you so if you want to be like the kids in the movies and go have a picnic on the school grass go do that if you want to study in a library like you see them do um in the movies or whatever if you want to feel like a college student go out and do it like i don't don't just be one of those people that sits in their room and you do all your classes online because you want to harp and get out and you want to go and attend one event a year you want to sit in your room and don't hang out with people you don't want to branch out you don't want to learn anything new you don't want to pick up a trait a skill a hobby you don't want to do anything fun but sit in your room and watch netflix all day stop being a loser you only can do this for four years go take advantage of the things that you have in front of you because they're not going to be there forever let's change it up a bit do not let your opportunities go away you had them for four years so freaking take them oh my god i cannot stress that enough i did that myself i was a freshman i took everything for granted boom i'm a junior that's how fast life moves on with or without you so go do it that's it that's all i have to say for the video thank you for watching love you guys thank you for the support i'm out